Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Let's play with some makeup. If you are new here, my channel is all about loving my collection as it currently is, being critical of new makeup releases, and just being very considerate about what we are deciding to bring into our makeup collection. For the purposes of this, it's like my three ethos. I'm like, <laughs> my three, the three ethos on this channel is loving our collection being critical of new makeup releases and being considerate about what we're bringing into our collection. This video falls into like ethos one and ethos three. So I have products that I have brought into my collection this month that we are gonna be playing with. I have older things that I just am like, you know, I haven't used them in a while, refreshing my memory. That's the vibe today. So it's not, I'm not getting ready to go anywhere. So we're just gonna play with the makeup. I'm gonna talk about the makeup. It's just getting to know it. So if that kind of content sounds good to you, please stick around for the rest of the video. And I would love to have you subscribe. That's the vibe here. That's what we're doing. Also, I'm on Patreon if you want to support me there. And also, I appreciate likes on this channel. I was thinking about this day, like literally this morning. And I was thinking about like the content of my channel and what it's going to look like in this new year. Like obviously, I have some projects going on. Most of my projects, we touch down on those once a month. And I think that my, my fear and my worry, what was going on in my brain was that like, I'm only going to talk about the same things most of the time. But then I realized that's the kind of content, that's, that's the kind of content, that's the kind of content that I like to take on. Because for me, and hopefully for you when you're watching this type of content from me or any other creator who reuses the, the same things over and over again, is to encourage you and me to really get a relationship with our products that we already bought without bringing new things in. Like I said, we are playing with some stuff that I did buy this month, but... When I bring something new into my collection now, this year, currently, they're not guaranteed to stick around after the first month. I'm going to play with them, see if I can get them to work, see if they feel beautiful and luxurious to me. So that, like, that is, that is the ultimate goal is to really suss out my collection in a very realistic way because... For you and for me, I'm not a big YouTuber. Clock the subscriber count, and honestly, I'm not. I'm not saying this to diminish what I do here or what anyone else who's a small creator on this platform does. But I'm not making a lot of money via this platform, so it's very unrealistic for me to have a, a, something new to talk about in every video. It's unrealistic for you as a consumer to always have something new to play with because that costs money. That's gonna cost me money, it's gonna cost you money. So we have to be really considerate about what we're bringing into our collection. And I realize that has like nothing to do with this video, but that's that's what I'm, that's my, that's my thoughts today. That's where I'm like landing thoughts wise. In these videos, they're kind of a continuation. If you watched the last one, you'll see how I, my thoughts and feelings about things have grown since touching down in the last video. And these will be reflected on at the end of the month, but I'm going to just tell you here and now. I will be decluttering Mothership 4. I just don't want it in my drawers anymore. I don't like it. It's not that the formula is bad, but it just isn't special enough. The color story doesn't speak to me. They're all shimmers. It doesn't feel elegant, and that's why it's like leaving my collection. I will elaborate on this more in a different video, but I just wanted to like, I keep opening my drawer and seeing it, and it's just like, I'm, I don't want to use that. I don't want to use that. Someone else will probably really love this, but for me, I, I won't. So I'm going to move on from that. Another thing that's leaving my collection is going to be the Fenty Cream Bronzer in the shade Butter Biscuit, which is this one because another cream bronzer I brought into my collection recently, Rain Supreme, it's not like that it's significantly better formula-wise because I actually think both formulas are very good, but I'll be playing with that bronzer today. So I'm going to actually just take this out of my drawer for now, but we will talk about it ad not well not ad not well kind of ad nauseum we will talk about it more in another video where i'm talking about what's leaving my collection and i think that's that okay cool so here's what we're going to play with today i think it's very fun to talk about these things at the top of the video and kind of get you get you and me prepped for what we're doing we're going to play with the Fido surgeons divine daylight <sighs> spectral shine and I've mentioned this before, but in case you haven't seen the last video, I don't like the packaging on this because I find it very difficult to open with the length of nails that I have, and that should just be considered. I I also, this is, I, I'm not saying that I'm the best at this, and I'm, I'm not calling out this brand specifically for anything, but I have been, this is just like kind of like content that I have been intaking. I, I have been watching videos and 
taking in content on how to be more aware of what could be ableist, even though you're not really considering it. So like, that's like a thing that's like a lot on my mind right now. And I know I'm not the best at clocking whenever I say something or do something that could be considered that. And I'm not specifically calling out any brand or anything else. But anyway, that's just, it's just like a thing that I've been very interested um, in trying to be better in and being aware of whenever I see brands do things. So anyway, we're going to play with this. We are going to, we're going to put some, we're going to actually physically, we're going to put some dents in this to see if I can get any more payoff. I'm doing that because it's something that the brand suggests. It's something that a subscriber of mine has suggested. It's something that my fellow YouTuber, her name's Chloe. Her, I think her channel is called Twiggly Puff. I will link that down below so you can check out Chloe's channel. She's doing a very cool, she's like doing a beauty bank, which is something I've never heard of. It's fascinating. I'm very excited to watch her do that. And she has a much more minimal collection. So if you're like into that, she's, she doesn't consider herself a minimalist, but it's much, her collection is much more reasonable <laughs> than mine. So go check her out. She is lovely, though she also told me to try scratching this up. Now, in my last Let's Play With Makeup, I didn't play with this item, but it's also from Fido Surgeons. This is their Skin Spark in the shade Smolder, and this blush is like, I mean, we're going to play with it today, but it is maybe the easiest cream blush that I have ever used. It, because I find that, well, we'll talk about it whenever I'm playing with it. Oh, another thing I'm getting rid of, because I'm over it. I'm over it. This is the sample that won't stop. I hate this primer. This is the Perfectionist Primer from Surratt. I do not like it. It is bad. Do not buy this. It has been making my skin look so bad. And I thought that maybe because it was winter and something was going on with my skin that perhaps that was why my makeup was sitting differently because I was just using this every day to try to get through it. But no, I pulled out an Old Faithful. I pulled out the Urban Decay All Nighter Primer, which we're gonna use today. Use it with the same foundation I've been using this with and it works so much better. This is garbage. Save your money, don't buy it. I'm, oh, I'm not even, I can't even finish this sample. That is how much I hate that product. Now, at first I was like very, about it but this is why we do these things imagine if I had the full size of that primer I used it a week in a row and I was like this is garbage because the just I'm just I'm continuing to try to build a relationship with my collection I'm also going to start prepping my lips with the Mario Badescu I'm already I'm fired up we are going to use the Pat McGrath foundation the it's right here like that's how much I have left where the tip of my nail is not where my finger pad is that is how much we have left in there. So very soon we'll be able to get through that, which I'm excited about. I need to re-up on Fix Plus. I'm just saying that out loud. I'll be using Laura Mercy Translucent Setting Powder as well as my Chantecaille Powder. I pulled out my Pat McGrath highlighter for reference against the Fido Surgeons, only because this is my most natural cream highlighter that I own. So I figured I would want to I want to see them next to each other, just on my arm, not on my face. I'll, I'll use one on my face. We're going to play with the Chanel bronzer again. We have the Big Moon Mascara from e.l.f. So we're going to play with that. We're going to use an Old Faithful Concealer. I think that this is almost done as well. This is the Brightening Pen from YSL. It's the Touche Clot All Over Brightening Concealer Pen. For the eye primer today, I'll be using Air Atelier. I haven't used it in a while, so I wanted to touch back down on it again. And then for lipstick, we're going to be using a Royal Scandal from Gucci. That's the plan. Oh, and for an eyeshadow palette, if you haven't seen, I created this eyeshadow palette. I was very inspired by like a grungy color story, so I made my own with these are singles and shades that I could pop out of other palettes to create this color story, so I'm going to play with this a little bit today as well. We're going to continue testing the the intensifies here. So that's what we're doing. Was that a really long intro? Well, maybe but it's also my video. First, I'm gonna start with my eyes. So I'm gonna use the Air Atelier Eye Primer. All right, how is everyone? How's everyone doing? It is Sunday. It is the 16th of January. I don't think this, this will probably be up on Saturday. I'm gonna record a series of videos after this that will be like my main content of the week. I'm. My goal is to have one of these Let's Play With Makeup a week as like three more well thought out videos or like I don't want to say that because not all of them are not that they're not thought out but like there's probably going to be a shit post from me this week it's not really a shit post but it's something that I had been promising to do and it's like certainly not my normal content I'm going to set my eyes with the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder set my base I want to continue as I said at the top like getting to know my collection a little bit better 
keep playing with things like I I want more reasons to play with this color story because it's so beautiful. As far as the eye shape goes today, I'm gonna do something smaller than I usually do, but I'm very excited to play with some more Cleona shades because they're so gorgeous. What I think I'm gonna do is transition with this gas lamp shade. This is from the sh from Noctex, and then use this yellow from the gold palette from Natasha Denona as my crease shade. And then all over the lid, I'm going to put this green shade. This is from the Dark Edits palette from Viseart. I'm gonna just hold this up just so you can get a better look. Cause I, I know that the lighting changes from, from place to place. So it's kind of hard to get a read on. And then I do when I wanna put, I believe this is, oh God, I can't remember the name of this. It's like something sparks. Or I, I might pull some other things, we'll see, but as of right now, this this is what I want to be the star of the show. And I might highlight the inner corner with a different highlighter. But that's the plan. That's what you'll see me doing here. Tomorrow, I think, I'm going to see Scream 5. At the time of editing, I still have not seen Scream 5. It is now Tuesday the 18th. Uh, we got a very bad snowstorm yesterday, so I didn't end up seeing it. And don't, no spoilers, don't slide into my DMs and spoil me. Once I have seen it, if you want to converse with me about it, go ahead. In my DMs, not on this platform, in my DMs on Instagram, you can do that, but not here. And only after I've seen it, okay? So make, ask. Let's not assume. Okay? So, in my comment section, would love to know if you have seen it. I don't want any spoilers. Let's not spoil anyone. I've heard it's very good. And obviously by the time that this has aired, I should have seen it. I will let, I will keep you posted in the, in the pinned comment. I will let you know whether or not I had actually gotten to see it, but it's, it's all, it's what I, I, I'm planning to see it with someone tomorrow so that's what I'm excited about right now I was watching Michelle Wong's channel earlier was that today I don't know I think it might have been today or it might have been last night anyway recently I was watching Michelle Wong's channel Michelle I I touched down on a couple times and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna say this and this is like not this is not a read on Michelle because Michelle and I obviously do very different types of content but I like to watch Michelle because she reviews luxury makeup and so it definitely helps me as a consumer who wants to be more conscious to see Michelle review things like that so I can be a better consumer by making a better purchase based on like reviews I see anyway but sometimes I can't touch down on Michelle all the time because she makes me want everything like obviously she does give bad reviews too but she does make me Every time I see something beautiful in her hands, I'm like, I want that. And that's that's a problem. <laughs> that's a problem. So if you ever have to do that with a creator, obviously, take your time. That makes sense. It doesn't mean you like them any less because I love Michelle. I think Michelle is a wonderful creator here on the platform. Sometimes we do be needing to break from some content creators just because, well, sometimes too, it's just like, you're just not vibing as much as you were. So taking a break and like letting their content build up and then you come back whenever you're ready. Sometimes that just makes all the difference, mama. That makes all the difference. I am being a little more loosey goosey with this eye shape. Also, I might do a rounded cut crease, which I don't, I don't know that I'm going to do that, but I might. Oh, we are going to do it. We are going to do a comparison of something towards the intensifies today as, as a, as a, as a test. So look forward to that. Anyway, was watching, what was I, what was I even saying? I was watching Michelle. I don't, I literally don't remember. Anyway, she brings me, she, she her, her content's like ASMR. Her vlogs are my favorite thing to watch. Like the fact that her mishmas was like all vlog content, but like there was beauty content within the vlogs. However, just, I would let Michelle just like talk to me all day. She's such a relaxing presence. I appreciate Michelle Wong. So now I'm gonna take that green from the Vizzy Art palette like I promised, and I'm gonna put that all over the lids. I am honestly really thrilled with the way that this self-made palette came out. I, if you watch that video, you can tell I'm like a little bit uneasy about <laughs> the choices that I'm making because, you know, I say I got nervous because I guess, I don't know. I don't know why, like I put like a pressure on myself that was like completely unreasonable. It's like almost like what if someone else does the same exact thing as me and they like hate the color story. And then I realized, why am I concerned about that? It's not like I'm, I'm not creating a palette for purchase. I'm creating a palette for me to use. And as long as I like it, 
it's fine. I am pulling this navy in to deepen things out a little bit. I think I'm maybe thinking more of like a halo eye situation. I'm just gonna take that in the inner corner and in this outer V. And I like don't want it too deep, but I want it to be deep enough that we, we know that I did it on purpose, you know? Like that I was like doing a halo eye. I've been having Tamiya stuck in my head, um, So Into You. It's such a good song. If you don't know it, go find it. I think it's because I've been like feeling my oats a little bit, feeling a little probably too confident in something that's going on in my life. I'm like, I'm like, I'm very comfortable. So I can like, I can listen to music about love. Oh my God. I'm so big. I'm, I'm literally like, I'm so basic sometimes. I'm like, I just want to be cuddled. I want to put on makeup and not after I'm done being cuddled or take it off before I am cuddled. But anyway, these are the two things I want. I just want to be cuddled and I want to put on makeup. Those are the two, those are my two exclusive things that I want to be doing at any given time. Cool. I think we're at a place where we can start playing with my mixing mediums. I'm going to take the intensifies and put it on my right eye. So I have been continued to play with this since the last time you saw me use it. I really like it. I do. It makes things very easy. Now, whether or not I think it's like a necessary product, that's for us to talk about at another time. And so I'm taking that sand, maybe it's Sandblast. I think Sandblast is the name of the shade. Tapping that onto the intensifies. And I'm gonna take a smaller brush and blend that out a little bit before working on the next eye. It really, I mean, it really foils the eyeshadow. Okay, so on my other eye, on the other eye, I'm gonna be using the Mayron Mixing Medium. Now, I am using a Cleona shadow, which I have never used with the Mayron Mixing Medium. Typically, like with my Pat McGrath shadows, I will get my brush wet and then dip it into the product, but because Cleona shades are, I don't wanna call, well, they're kind of finicky. Like, they're very soft. Uh, if you've seen, I broke all of my Cleonas by like dropping a palette once and like, I understand that like, duh, sometimes things are just softer than other things, but like, I don't know. I don't wanna ruin the formula. Whereas with Pat McGrath, with her formulas, when she used to, she used to, whenever she, whenever Pat McGrath would sell kits that she wanted you to use a mixing medium with, she would put this specific mixing medium in and she would demonstrate by like getting a wet brush, putting that in the product. What I'm gonna, tr what I'm gonna try to do is I'm just going to brush it onto my lid and then use my fingers to press in the shadow. If I'm not getting the same color payoff I would have if I was using a Pat McGrath shadow by getting the drenched brush actually in the product. I will try it, but I wanted to try this first. So just this is, um, this, this is, this could be, this could give me a result that's like not good in any way. So I'm just, I'm letting you know that this is not something I've done before. Mm. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay. So I am going to put it in the product. Okay, I'm gonna tap my finger over top of that with some product just to hopefully boost it up. This brush does not have the medium on it, by the way. I'm gonna add, for fairness, I'm gonna add a little more on top of this side as well. Huh, okay. I'm going to zoom you in. It's Pat McGrath on this eye, the Mayron Mixing Medium on this eye. Did I do that right? Pat McGrath, Mayron. <laughs> Interesting. So I do think that the um, I don't know. So obviously there's a price difference that'll get broken down in a, in my review, but like it almost is the same. Obviously there's some usage difference. We saw that in real time, but like I do in real life, this one's giving more reflection, not so much more, but 
Oh. I'm a little perplexed. I'm, I don't have... I think that this one's much closer to call. I did I did use... Um, and now I'm just going to fuss with these a little bit more. Just fuss with the eyes a little bit more. I did compare the Intensifies to the NYX Glitter Primer. I will say that I do feel like in that scenario, it was a little more noticeable. The difference... This one was a, a little harder to tell. However... This eye, I think, is like looks better. However, we did see that I burned my eye. Now, I've never done that before with the mixing medium. That was like, I'm going to try something, and that was not it. So don't do that, okay? Because this is a very high, I think alcohol is like the second ingredient. Yeah, alcohol is the second ingredient. I also, be aware, this is literally, and I, I mean, it's probably not the same exact ratio, but the ingredients in this are the exact same as the Makeup by Mario, which you get a much smaller size and costs a lot more. So if you did like that product and you wanted to not spend that much on it, get, just get this. I'm gonna take this dark green here and I'm gonna deepen out on the outsides just a little bit more because that's what I would like to do. Also, I'm doing this to see how easy it is to blend over top of the areas that have the mixing medium because I will say this with the NYX glitter primer, once it's down, once it's tacky, it's like you can't blend things over top of it. But I would say for both of these, blending over top of the areas that have the mixing mediums on them is working just fine. And then on the inner corner, I think I'm gonna actually use this shade. I don't know what the name of it, but this blue shade, just just to see if it works. We're playing with makeup, so it might not, but it might, and wouldn't that be fun? That's interesting. I don't know that I love it, but I also don't think I hate it. Wow, we have gone on quite the journey. Okay, let's start working on the base. I'm gonna be using the Urban Decay All Nighter Face Primer. After using the Surratt Primer and then using this again, I was like, wow. Night and day. My skin, night and day. It is just so much better than that Surratt one. And this one, I believe, is like $30 to $40, like $40 at most. Don't, don't waste your money on that Surratt Primer. Don't. Uh, and uh, this is not my all-time favorite primer, but I think this is a very, 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 very good primer. Really like it. I'm going to give that a second. I'm going to give that a second to soak in. And if you've ever been curious as to why I don't prime my face until, like, I pro like why I don't put my primer on while I'm doing my eye, because I feel like a lot of the primers I use still have some residual tackiness, and so if I get any fallout, it's just, like, harder to clean up. And so... I just wait until after. It would definitely solve my like glitter being all over my face problem, but maybe I don't consider that a problem. I let that set a little bit. For foundation today, we're going to be using the Pat McGrath foundation. Wow. Wow. That's never happened before. The It squirted ever. It just got everywhere. It's never, one, it's never done that before. Two, it's definitely because the foundation is almost used up. So I just think that have you ever, like when you use the end of a setting spray, you know how it like sprays so much different? I think that's all that's happening. So it just sprayed a lot and I will keep that in mind moving forward when using this foundation. It snowed really bad, not here, but in some places, but like places that aren't far from here and like we got no snow. And listen, I, uh, I don't love snow, right? Especially when it like prohibits me from having fun and doing things however I work from home so as far as like getting snow it's not something that's like the biggest problem for me specifically I always have issue with foundation on the nose like not staying however it's like pretty particularly bad right now I had like a cystic zit on my tip of my nose and it's it's it doesn't hurt anymore and it's definitely like going back down but it, it it has been very prohibitive for my makeup application it's like it's been looking fine in like photos of my makeup but it's not looking good in real life so it's that's fine but it's also just like pretty annoying we have a lot of cream products to play with today i'm going to be using the chanel Le Beige. 
Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. This is the shade Tan Deep Bronze. And so this is the reason, as I said earlier, that I'm getting rid of the Fenty. I like this shade a little bit better. I like the formula a skosh better, but I don't think that... I wouldn't say, like, it's so much better that it's, like, so worth the amount of money it is. It is, like... It's just kind of like part of makeup for me is like the overall experience. And while the Fenty product is also a very beautiful product, I really don't like the packaging of it. And the Chanel one just provides, you know, a little more luxe of an experience. But I don't think that makes it like that much better. Like, I don't know. Like, I really like this Chanel product. But I also am not going to sit here and tell you that this is something that you need to run out and buy. So I think that's the, the best way to put it is like, I'm really enjoying it. I have no regrets when I'm when I'm done using it or whenever I feel like our relationship will be coming to an end me and the Chanel which I don't think is going to be anytime soon I won't think I don't think I'll have an issue trying a different formula like I don't think I'm going to be that attached to it that it's going to be something that I'm like oh I need that again you know but right now it is the bronzer that I do want to pick up all the time so there's that but also I'm still getting to know this product which is why I'm also using it more than my other products that are for bronzing. I just love how easily it blends out. And the ultimate thing between this and the Fenty bronzer is the just, I like this color a little bit more. Because this one, it does, it is ruddy. It is more ruddy than the Fenty, but the Fenty one is more orange. And I think between ruddy and orangey, I'd rather have ruddy. But also the way this blends, oh, just, I don't know. I'm very, I'm just very into this product, okay? All right, for blush today, this is the Fido Surgeon's Skin Spark and Smolder. And I have been absolutely loving this formula. It's like a super, it's like almost like a mousse. It reminds me of the, I never, I never used this product because it was before I was into makeup. But in high school, I remember girls having like, um, like a, the Dream Matte Mousse Foundation. And I feel like this reminds me of that consistency. And I'm just gonna tap a little on and then blend it out with a different finger as to not add more pigment because it has nice pigmentation and it's definitely there, but I also don't want too much of it either. I find this formula incredibly easy to work with. It blends out like a dream. And yeah, unlike the highlighter, I have like had no issues with this. I love this shade. I really like this formula. Very into it. I'm looking a little ghostly today. I don't really know what's going on. Okay, so now the time has come for the Fido Surgeon's Spectral Shine Divine Daylight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to just kind of scratch up the surface a little bit, which feels very sacrilegious. But both the brand, like I said earlier, like the, I just made some scuffs in it. So the brand said to do this or like, you know, it just, it feels very weird to do that. I'm not going to lie. I am going to take the Fido Surgeon Sky Fluff to apply it today. And as I've mentioned before, they say you really go for it, really get the brush in there. And that's what I'm going to do. Get product on here and I'm going to buff it into the skin. Before I put anything on with my finger, I will say I can see it much more today than I have been able to see it. I am going to take my finger and swirl it in and tap that on just to see if I can get anything more than what we've got. I'm going to continue playing with this, but I do think that this is like not for me. And so what I'm going to do now is this is my most subtle cream highlight that I have that isn't this product. I am going to tap it onto this side of my face. I don't think it'll mess anything up, you know. Well, that is still very subtle. This is obvious, like, I, I, I'm I, trying to communicate with y'all and be honest with myself. This is a very subtle highlight for me, this Pat McGrath one, right? This, you know I like a glow. I like a 
glow. That's really what I like. Now, this is still very subtle. I think you can agree with me that this is not a blinding highlight. However, this is probably about as natural as I'm willing to go. I want that. I want the dewiness. And I, if if this would have provided like a sheen like this, I would have been very satisfied with this product. But the reality of the situation is it's not. I'm going to continue playing with it to see if I can get it to work. But I'm going to say this here, and you'll hear me say it again in like the, the final thoughts video about the Fido Surgeons highlighter in my budget video that will come at the beginning of next month. A product shouldn't be so unintuitive. And what I mean by that is when I buy a product, let's, let, let's go, let's, okay. When I buy a product, this is like Chanel's bronzer, right? And I've used cream bronzer before. So my, my baseline is this should be, I should be able to use this exactly as I use every other cream bronzer and that there's no additional work involved with that. Now there might be some playing around with like, okay, like I like it better with my finger than a brush. I usually use a brush, but like I, I can acknowledge that a finger application is the way to go. The fact that like, if you buy the brush with this, if I have, if I never, like, so say, I, I don't know that Fido Surgeons is available to purchase inside. Like, I don't know that they have stock because I think you can only buy it through their website. But if I went to a store and I picked this up on the shelf, off the shelf, and it performed the way it did, I'd be so confused. I mean, like, I kind of am confused even now, but what I mean by that is it's confusing. It's not intuitive. Like, the fact that I had to, or that it's suggested, and I'm, again, this would be any brand who would release something where it's like you have to do like a b and c thing this should be able to work for me like woo out the bam like i should get the shine that i'm expecting even if it is a subtle shine i should get it the first time i use it i should get it without having to scratch dents in it but i wouldn't know that unless other people told me or i like read it on the brand's website it's do you know what i mean so like it should be more intuitive than this and while i love that people really love this product that people really rave about this product i just think that it should be more just easier to use than this and i just don't think this is an easy to use product so i'm gonna like take a break on this for a while and trying to make it work i am now i'm gonna focus a little more on this brush going forward to see if i like it with anything it's like a fine it's like it seems to be a fine brush but like it it's i don't like it with that so i want to try it with like another cream highlighter and see what happens try it with some blushes to see if i like that brush okay that was a lot y'all i'm sorry that i came so hard and fast but that, that's my thoughts like i just don't it shouldn't be hard for me to use a product a product should be very easy to use like i shouldn't have to try it for two weeks scratch off the top then maybe get some payoff but I just don't think that's how that should work. For concealer, I'm going to be using the Touche Clot All Over Brightening Concealing Pen, as I said at the beginning. I'm going to powder my face with the Chantecaille Blurring Powder. And so on the lower lash line, I am going to use actually that green shade i used on the outer edges i just think that'll be really beautiful on the lower lash line i'm gonna spray my face and i'll be right back for mascara today i'm gonna be using the big mood from elf i have continued to enjoy using this i really like it the i hmm I guess I don't know that I think it's special enough that like I want to run out and repurchase it but I guess I, I would also say to be very honest like mascara is really not a thing that I truly get excited about in general now that I'm done with most of my face I I took some of the light I took some of the lighting down because it was um, blowing me out but I needed that light when I was doing my eye look just to be able to like just to be able to like really see what I was doing. I was gonna use a Royal Scandal today, but then I think that the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude in 33NP Noah is gonna be better. I'm gonna wipe off my lip gloss, my lip boom. This is it. I'm gonna zoom you in so you can see my skin as we do. My skin looks so much better without that primer. 
Like, if you saw my last Let's Play With Makeup, although, no, no. If you saw my last Let's Play With Makeup together, I felt like I looked really dry today. I don't feel like I'm having that. The Pat McGrath highlighter is really doing its thing. It's holding up the end of the bargain. Now, I do feel like I lost the blush a little bit, but I think that is from, like, the... <laughs> the vigorousness of applying that highlight with this brush however i still think it looks gorgeous the chanel bronzer doing her job the eye what do we think of this eye do we like it the colors are a little bit weird but i kind of like it as i want to continue doing as i started in my project formerly known as mesmus as i would like to continue to do let's reflect on everything that we have used today my self-made palette of course i loved doing i love playing with it like it, this is so much fun like, I really like the color story I put together. I feel like this is even much grungier than the first look I did with it. So, really enjoying that. I think it's very gorgeous, very stunned. The Intensifies continues to impress me. The more I'm using it, the more I, I know the specificities of it. And I think that's very important whenever it comes to whether or not I would recommend this to you. So, that's interesting. That's a, that's a fun development. Really like it. Like, as of now, you really can't tell the difference with the eyes now that they've sat for a while. But I do I do still think that this is a stronger stronger one than this one. But you can let me know what you think in the comments. Go ahead. I, you know, sometimes we see things differently. The Mayron Mixing Medium should never be applied to your eyes without a product on it. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. That was terrifying, and I wouldn't do that again. So... We learned our lesson, however. It is more labor intensive than the Intensifies. However, I don't think it's that much more difficult. And when you're thinking cost effectiveness wise, I think that like this makes more sense. Also, you would never really be able to, with this, you can turn things into liners with like a liner brush. With this, you wouldn't be able to do the same thing. So those are things that I'm thinking about as I'm like, formulating opinions for whenever it comes time to review the product. The All Nighter Primer, really enjoy. It gave me a good finish today. I feel like I'm working my way through it. Like we are thinning out here, which is good. We love that. The Pat McGrath Foundation continues to be just fine. Like using it, as I've said many times, not planning on repurchasing this when I'm done with it. Just trying to use it up since I did purchase it. The YSL All Over Brightening Concealer Pen continues to be very beautiful and very gorgeous. I really like it. Trying to use this up. This is something that I would consider repurchasing. However, I'm trying to use this up before I start using my truly beloved Armani concealer. But, you know, we need to make progress on things. That's part of my goals this year. I'm not a project planner, but I do want to be using up things this year. And that's like a very big goal of mine. The Chanel bronzer, I really like it. I really like the way it looks. It also, I don't think that it's like one of its claims. I do feel like where it sits on my face, it looks extremely airbrushed. So I don't know if this has like something that is in it that's supposed to blur, but I do feel like I get that effect with it. So I'm, I don't know that it's promising that, but I do feel like that's what it looks like on the skin. The Fido Surgeon's Blush, as you saw, very easy to blend down, beautiful product, beautiful finish. Like even if, if I just didn't even highlight, this would be like very pretty on its own. It has, it's not, it doesn't have a shimmer to it, but I do feel like it's, it matches the luminosity of what I have underneath it, which typically is something pretty luminous. I think the Spectral Shine, I think this only has a couple more uses before I like call it quits. I just don't think I like it. So it's unfortunate, but it, I, I, I'm not dismissing it completely. I think I, I think I see it. I think I can see why people like it. But I think I just got to be honest with myself. It's, it just isn't it. Just isn't, isn't it for me. And then the Pat McGrath Highlighter Stick Cream. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Again, I do think that this is like what... what I, when I think of a subtle highlight, I think of this. Something that is more dewy than it is shiny, right? Like, I just feel like it's there. You can see it. I want you to be able to see it. But I don't feel like this is blinding. I think the lighting I have right now leads you to might lead you to think that this is a blinding highlight, but I don't think it is at all. But this is also the least reflective highlight that I own in my collection besides the one from Fido Surgeons at this time. And I think this this if this is like a good equivalent for someone who wants to see their highlight. The Chantecaille Blurring Powder, no complaints. Laura Mercier Setting Powder, no complaints. The Big Moon Mascara, like I said, it's like, it's pretty good. I really like it. I wonder if I, I probably would like it more if I curled my lashes, but I, I'm not that, I'm not that girl. I have a lash curler. I've actually never tried to curl my lashes. In beauty school, someone curled my lashes one time, but I don't really remember the outcome of that. But yeah, for $8, I'm not mad at it. The I Need a Nude Noah lipstick. I think this is actually the best application of it that I've had. 
I have been having issues with it, like in the inner ring. Now, I understand that this is a satin and it's gonna move around just a little bit, but sometimes I feel like it's like patchy there, which of course makes sense. That's where like the liquidy, that's where the moisture starts in my mouth, for lack of a better way to put it. So I do feel like. I don't know. Sometimes I don't love that. That wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed playing with my makeup. I hope you pulled out some of your makeup and we were doing our makeup together. That's what I would like to encourage. Pull out some of your favorite products. Always like start the video, put me on pause, pull out some things you haven't used in a while, put them on your face, pull out your newer things that you haven't solidified your opinion on. Play with that kind of makeup while we were watching these videos so that we could be doing our makeup together. Because in my head, it's like a, a almost like a slumber party little mini event that we are doing where it's like, we're all together in the same room. We're all putting on our newest makeup, our oldest makeup. We are trying to form opinions on it. We're like all doing that together. So if you are doing that at all, or if you are doing that with something recently, go ahead and let me know down in the comments, like what you've been trying, what you've been re, what you're revitalized by, what you're getting rid in your collection like let me know that's all stuff that I would love to hear if you are new here and you made it to the end of the video I would love to have you subscribe again this is a lot of what my content is about like I said I have my my three ethos of my my, my three my six ethos my three ethos of my channel so that's a lot of what you'll see I would love to have you subscribe don't forget to like this video it really helps me and I'm also on patreon if you would like to support me there that ends the video thank you again so much for watching all the way through and don't rem don't remember <laughs> and remember to follow your hoat and you will find me <laughs> I will see you in the next video bye friends